Hey guys, how's it going? We have uh, a few updates for you. We will go over the light curve of Tabby Star that has been updated for today, September 29th from Tabby's team. And we will explain why Tabby Star slightly brightens just before the short-term dimming events happen. And we will also provide you with an update to the long-term dimming of Tabby Star. This is the current normalized light curve of Tabby Star taken in the R-band with multiple telescopes at two locations on opposite sides of the Earth, and circle in red is the latest flux level. It looks like we are at the nominal flux level for Tabby Star. The one thing that should be noted is that the weather at both observatories has been really bad. And the three data points circled in red prior to the current one are all riding too high. So those data points will probably be thrown out later on. For our second topic, it was mentioned on Reddit that the short-term dimming events seem to be preceded by a slight brightening of Tabby Star. Well, we are going to explain why this happens. Notice the slight brightening occurrences uh, in red uh, just before the short-term dimming events happen, and also a slight brightening after the recoveries occurs as well. Well, there is a good reason for this, and we will explain it now. So this is a model of a typical light curve for a transiting planet around its star. Even though the light curve for a large non-spherical object, such as a large dust cloud, will not exactly match this light curve, the following characteristics will be observed to a very great extent in the light curve. So this position shows the point in the light curve where the planet or large object is behind its star. The level of flux at this point is the full nominal flux of the star. Then as the large object becomes visible, as it travels from around the backside of the star, the light curve slightly but abruptly brightens. And the reason the light curve brightens is that the reflection of the star's light off of the large object is added to the full flux of the star. Then as the large object continues to travel around to almost the front of the star, the slope of the light curve dims slightly back to nominal flux just before it begins to block out a portion of the star's light. Then the large object begins to block out a portion of the star's light, and this is when we experience our short-term dimming events, which we report on this channel. And as the large object ends its transit and begins to travel back around the other side of its star, you see a more gradual brightening that occurs after the short-term dimming event due to the reflection of the star's light reflected off of the large object, which is added to the full flux of the star. And finally, as the large object goes behind the star again, the flux level drops down slightly to the nominal flux level of the star. So setting this model in motion, you can see the point in the light curve that corresponds to the position of the planet, or in our case, the large object. So this is why Tabby Star slightly but abruptly brightens just before a short-term dimming event and a more gradual brightening just after the short-term dimming event. This channel has very high confidence that this is the answer to the observed brightening phenomenon. For our third and last topic, this is an update on the long-term dimming of Tabby Star. Since we are at the end of the month and we want to update you guys at least once every month on this. So we are revisiting our theory that the long-term dimming of Tabby Star is accelerating. The rate of acceleration is expressed by the equation for the visual magnitude in the V-band as shown here. So guys, we are putting it to the test of time as we said we would. So this is a large table of the V-band measurements taken by David Lane over an almost two year period. And we have broken up that long table to fit on your screen across two charts. And these measurements were taken using the Burke Gaffney Observatory Telescope at the campus of St. Mary's University in Nova Scotia, Canada. So these V-band measurements take us from October 27th of 2015 to September 26th of 2017. And this is the visual magnitude V-band measured data versus the calculated accelerating long-term dimming curve, showing an updated scatter plot of those measurements represented by all the small circles. 
and the red curve is the calculated accelerating long-term dimming profile based on our original equation highlighted in red. And the latest measured V-band magnitude was 11.870 with a corresponding calculated V-band magnitude of 11.8760 for a 0.6% difference between the two values. So to see more clearly how well the equation for the accelerating long-term dimming is tracking to the actual measured data, we took the 20 data point simple moving average of all the V-band measurements. In other words, each time a V-band measurement was taken, we would average in the previous 19 measurements along with it and then plot that averaged data point. So this again is the calculated accelerating long-term dimming curve. And when we plot all the 20 data point simple moving averages of all the V-band measurements, we get this curve superimposed on the accelerating long-term dimming curve. Notice how well we are tracking so far. It's actually a little surprising, guys. Without a tweak uh, so far to the original equation, we are able to predict with accuracy the accelerating long-term dimming. Notice over the course there were a few brief brightening departures, but when we had these brightening departures, they were followed by a steep drop in the long-term trend immediately afterwards to catch up to the accelerating long-term dimming uh, calculated curve. Seems very similar to the brightening events just before the short-term dimming events that we just discussed earlier. So guys, we maintain that the long-term dimming of Tabby Star is continuing and that its trajectory is that of an accelerating curve. So to wrap this up, the equation prediction uh, that was calculated for the visual magnitude is 11.8760 with a 4.3% drop from our initial conditions of 11.833 on November 9th of 2015. That was 22.52 months ago. Our last measurement shows our visual magnitude at 11.870 with a 3.7% drop from our initial conditions. And our 20 data point simple moving average shows our visual magnitude at 11.872 with a 3.90% drop. Therefore, the delta between the prediction and the 20 data point simple moving average is 0.40%. You know, um, just about anyone can write a paper and have it published these days. And this uh, peer review process should not be the end of the process. I am an electrical engineer, and when we design something, we don't peer review the design. We build a prototype and test the heck out of it over time and make tweaks to it, and then test it some more and so on. Um, guys, do not forget the scientific method instead of the peer review way that they do business. Um, you need to do systematic observations, measurements, experimentations, and the formulation, testing, and modification of your theories. That's what it's about, guys. So um, anyway, that's all we have for you today. Take care, guys, and we will see you in our next video.